remote presentation. It's called Values of Exploration in Recommender Systems. Oh, and here is Min Min again. Hello. Yes. Hi, hi everyone. This is Min Min from Google again. Um, can you see my screen fine? It's great. Yes. Okay. Yes, um, so I'm here to present the work on understanding the values of user exploration in recommender systems. Um, uh, yes, so this is a joint work with many collaborators uh, within Google. And um, as the title suggested, this is a work on exploration. Um, well, exploration exploitation has been extensively studied in RL. Uh, the roles of exploration in recommender systems is less clear uh, in our opinion. So we actually have uh, another work at this venue which uh, focus on this uh, entangling the different roles exploration played in recommender systems. But this work is going to be focusing on one specific aspect of exploration which we call user exploration. Uh, so that means to uh, basically identify unknown user interests or to introduce users uh, to new interests. Uh, notice that the definition is actually very aligned with the serendipity uh, notion that uh, people have been using in the RECSIS community. Um, and the main contribution of this work is basically to connect user exploration and serendipity towards a uh, long-term user experience. Um, Uh, yeah, so how do we make the connection? So we have a, a three-stage process. Uh, first, we basically introduce several RO-inspired uh, exploration algorithms try to introduce more exploration to, uh, to the recommender system. Um, and then uh, we basically compare these uh, different exploration strategies on uh, several um, aspects of the recommendation quality, uh, which are accuracy, diversity, novelty, novelty and serendipity. Uh, at the same time, we also conduct live experiments observing uh, the effect of these different exploration algorithms in uh, live, uh, uh, live uh, experiment traffic, and then uh, measuring uh, how does these uh, strategies lead to uh, the, uh, the long-term uh, user, uh, user, uh, user experience change. And then by comparing the offline uh, metrics towards the live metrics, we make the connection uh, between these uh, different uh, recommendation qualities towards um, long-term user growth. Um, so we built this work on top of our previous work on um, building RL-based recommender systems, uh, where our goal is to build a recommendation agent so that it can interact with the users to maximize uh, the cumulative reward. Um, so in this case, the action the agents can take is to make recommendations and the state that uh, the, the agent captures is basically the user's interest as well as the context and the reward that the agent observed uh, captures the user's satisfaction towards recommendation. Um, and the uh, algorithm we used is the very classic uh, reinforced algorithm, which basically tried to learn a stochastic policy that casts a distribution over the action space, conditioning on the user state so that the uh, cumulative reward can be maximized. And we learn the policy parameters by taking gradient um, on the reinforced objective. And the algorithm we are introducing next uh, is basically trying to change uh, the, uh, the objective function or the reward function uh, or the um, uh, state representation the agent used for learning to introduce more uh, exploration uh, towards the system. So the first algorithm is very straightforward. We basically add a regularization term to the uh, objective function uh, to encourage the agents to be uh, as random as possible. And the second algorithm here basically change the reward function the agent used for learning uh, to reward the agent for discovering some unknown patterns of the environment. In this case, uh, it is our users. Um, so how can we, um, so basically we design um, the reward function so that um, the reward, the, the final reward that's given to the agent will be higher if, uh, if the agent actually discover some unknown uh, interest of the users. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, the capital R, E, R, D, uh, so these are the extrinsic rewards uh, that the agent observed. So basically these are the explicit uh, feedback the user have been given to the system. 
and we multiply the extrinsic reward by a constant factor if uh, recommending this action AT under the uh, car user state actually leads to discovery of previous, previously unknown user interest. So how do we uh, determine if an action actually uh, help discover a previous unknown user interest? So first we capture the unknown part by comparing this candidate action towards all the uh, historical uh, items the user have, inter uh, have uh, interacted on the platform. So if the candidate is different in terms of topic than the uh, historical uh, items the user have consumed, then we consider this action um, uh, or this action leads to an unknown uh, discovery of unknown uh, user interest. And the second part, uh, so basically we need to capture the relevance or the interest part. Um, so the, the multiplication design here actually naturally uh, accomplishes that because the reward can only be higher if the extrinsic reward is high. Um, which means that um, the user is actually interested in the item and then uh, they decided to interact with the item. Um, and the third algorithm uh, is basically an extension of the second one. Um, so once the agent discovered that the user has actually a new interest, it should change its action or its recommendation to reflect that. So in order to facilitate that, we basically add um, an, a, a, an additional bit to the uh, user trajectory uh, to indicate that if any of the historical actions, the user, uh, historical uh, items the user uh, consumed is um, actually from an unknown uh, user interest, um, so that basically the agent can choose to pay more attention to uh, to the uh, to these events when and uh, when it's trying to formulate the the user interest or, or the user state. Um, so with these algorithms, then we measure the effect of them on four uh, aspects of recommendation qualities. Uh, so the accurate on accuracy uh, aspect, we uh, use the. Uh, mean average position at K, which uh, basically captures how well the agent is able to predict the next item the agent, uh, the user is going to be interact with. Um, and the second one on diversity, uh, we basically, uh, diversity basically map, the matrix measures uh, how similar or dissimilar uh, the, the recommendation set is. And the novelty, uh, the novelty matrix basically captures um, how well the algorithm is able to recommend a tail uh, or a less popular content. And the serendipity basically captures uh, how well the agent is able to re uh, recommend something that is uh, relevant, but is still uh, outside of the known user interest. Um, so for offline measurement, we extracted close to a billion user trajectories uh, on a industrial recommender platform. Um, and then we learned uh, the, uh, the recommendation policy using the reinforced algorithm as introduced before, uh, but with different uh, exploration uh, strategies uh, as uh, we introduced. And then we evaluate the learned policy on a separate test set by sampling according to the learned uh, policy and then measure uh, the four matrix um, on, on the test set. So the paper contains uh, more detailed numbers, but here is a summary of the findings uh, we have observed. Um, so as expected, all these different exploration strategy will reduce the accuracy of the re recommendation. And the entropy regularization is uh, great at increase the diversity and novelty of the, uh, the, the end recommendation, but it comes at the cost of the accuracy as well as serendipity. Um, and the two other algorithms that focus on uh, introducing users to unknown interest or uh, new interest, uh, even though the, the overall accuracy matrix was reduced, the serendipity matrix is actually uh, improved uh, by, by these methods. Um, and then we also conducted a life experiments to uh, measure the effect of these different exploration strategies. So the control uh, group is running um, the, the baseline reinforced algorithm uh, with both man sampling and serving. So there is uh, uh, exploration in the baseline as well, but uh, there's no um, exploration added in training. 
And then the uh, the three uh, figures here shows basically the three uh, three exposure strategies that we introduced before. Um, so as we can see here, uh, the entropy regularization, which is great at improving diversity and novelty, actually does not measure and improve user experience in the user diverted uh, experiments. So there could be two reasons. One is that uh, actually, uh, as the previous uh, discussion, that diversity and novelty alone, it's not a one fit all uh, solution. So uh, it does not necessarily lead to improved um, user experience. And the second could be connected to the measurement challenge we actually discussed uh, in the other paper. And the user exploration, the two user exploration algorithm actually is uh, performing very well in these experiments. We can see there's um, a, a large improvement in the top line matrix compared to the baseline algorithm, and the uh, the effect actually keeps growing uh, during the experiment phase. And uh, so these uh, figures here basically studies the learning effect uh, of these uh, exploration strategies. So we can see that actually there is a very strong learning effect during the experiment phase, uh, which explains the trending up uh, matrix that we saw before. So the number of um, user uh, interest group actually keeps growing during experiments compared to the, uh, to the control group. Uh, basically meaning that in the experiment group, the user actually uh, uh, is engaging with uh, more and more uh, new uh, interest um, compared to the compared to the control. And um, as a measurement of the long-term user experience, we basically look at a matrix which captures how often the user is returning to the platform. So as one can imagine, if the user experience is improved, then we expect the user to be uh, coming back to the platform more often. And we can see that the uh, user exploration uh, actually causes the user to return to the platform more often. And if uh, when we uh, basically bucketize or uh, digging down on the uh, different user groups, um, the, uh, based on their uh, activity on the platform before the experiment started. And we can see that the group of users who uh, used to be less active on the platform are actually become more active uh, because of the experiment treatment. So there are um, actually more users, uh, casual users converted to core uh, because of the experiment treatment. So in conclusion, uh, basically the uh, work demonstrated that through uh, efficient user exploration that encourages uh, discovering of unknown user interests or trying to introduce users to new interests, uh, that can lead to improved long-term user experience. And for future work, we would like to study uh, even more efficient ways to introduce users to new interests. And uh, that's it. Thanks for your attention and I can take questions. Thank you very much. We have time for one or two questions. There's one already. Hi, uh, great talk. Um, I was wondering, uh, if I understood correctly, if, if the reason you care about diversity is to um, maximize long-term engagement, could you just train on long-term engagement and learn the diversity by using that reward function directly? That's a great question. So the reason um, the reason that we uh, we we actually do not directly optimize long-term user experience is because it's actually a matrix that is very hard to be optimized. Uh, so basically, you could imagine there are a lot of uh, actually extrinsic uh, factors. Uh, a lot of external factors that actually contribute, for example, to the uh, to the fact that a user returning to the platform. So, uh, basically, the longer the um, uh, the the outcome, the horizon that the these long term metrics that you are trying to optimize for, the harder it will be um, to be directly optimizing it. So you could imagine like a single recommendations effect on whether or not the user returning to the platform is going to be, the, the, the causal connection is going to be very weak. So it's, it's actually not very easy to, or like it's, it's very challenging uh, to directly optimize that. Um, um, and yeah, so that's, uh, that's actually a, a, a challenge we have been facing 
um, and we found actually uh, trying to decide or determine these uh, factors which actually contribute to the long-term user experience and optimize these factors as a surrogate or proxy is actually much uh, much more fruitful than directly optimize the long-term outcome by itself. Okay, thanks. One quick question. So you talk about long-term user experience for your life experience uh, experiments. How long did you run them? So uh, for the um, for the experiments, we have run them for six weeks, um, and some of some of the other experiments we run could be uh, uh, even longer. So we even have a whole back experiment that runs for um, multiple months uh, to capture the long-term effect. So some of these effects do come in uh, much slower than others, so which will require much longer uh, measurements. Okay, thank you. So we have more questions online. I think we can take them offline and uh, discuss them maybe uh, in the online systems. So thank again, thanks again for the presentation. Thank you. And let's move on to the next remote presentation. It's uh, called Online Evaluation.